I think what makes a good character is agency. Mm -hmm. I think the character has to be someone who you can believe exists outside the confines of whatever you're looking at them at. You have to believe that they are not just a character in the game, that they are someone who has hopes and dreams, has a family they're going home to, that they are someone who exists. So you've got all these characters of agency, how does that not take away from mine as a player? I think it actually adds to it because I don't think you can, in the same way that you cannot have real triumph in a game without the possibility of failure, you cannot have real joy without there being sadness to contrast with that. You cannot have real agency in a sense that you've earned something unless you have other characters who are as involved as you are. It was fine if you loved them. It was fine if you hated them. It just sucked if you didn't care. Indifference. Yeah, yeah. It has to be Morden was right about the genophage. Morden was a monster because of his thoughts on the genophage, but like everybody had an opinion about that. Right. Well, and speaking of monsters, mm -hmm. you made people kill Morden. I did. So what, what was Technically, the thing I didn't that? make people kill Morden. Mm -hmm. I gave people the chance to make a difficult, morally compelling decision. Choices have a lot more meaning when you're making a choice between characters mm -hmm. than if you're making a choice between causes. Or a character versus a cause. Yes. A character will always win. Because you identify, you, you have an emotional response to a character. Yeah, no one calls it that exciting moment between the Solarian Council and the future of the Genophage. People right. call it the Morden, the, the Morden moment. You had spoiled that months in advance and I still choked up when that happened. We had just made that a, hey, yeah, it was really nice, Morden, goodbye and it was because of Sylvia that we added the seashells. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. And seashells is the, is the ironic repetition. Right. So it's here's Morden in the med bay of the Normandy saying, might retire, uh, might run some tests on the seashells, and yeah. it's, it's a fun moment about, oh man, that guy's never gonna retire. He's always, he's, he's you know, he's, 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 he's manic, a he's, he's a workaholic, yeah. he's, he's always gonna come up with something to do, would have liked to run tests on the seashells. It wouldn't have been as strong if I had said, wish I weren't going to die, but that's really what he's saying. Yeah, so. because it shows, it shows growth. What you've done there is moved his regret, right? Because of course, throughout, throughout the whole arc, Morden's regret, to my mind, was very much, I did this genophage thing and I'm increasingly convinced it might have been a bad call. Yep. And then I did it again. <laughs> Which means that what you've demonstrated through uh, seven words or so is I've grown as a character, but also I've fixed the thing that I've been carrying around. I've put down this weight. I'm finally reaching my end in peace. Yeah. Hey, let's talk about Solus. Okay. He thinks of himself as, I don't know, Harry Potter. He thinks of himself as... He he's the one who him, lived? He's the one who lived, and he's this luckless, unfortunate person who, uh, by an unpleasant destiny and by the simple fact that no one else has the ability to do it, that so has to be him, someone else might get it wrong, mm. he's the one who has to do this stuff. But really, the Inquisition itself is part of that villain, as part of the villainy. That's the overreach. Right. Um, and Solus is... In his uh, in his trickster or in his um, his court jester role, almost he's poking at you and making you see, no, I didn't do all this. You did all this, and now it's out of your hands. Now the Inquisition is making decisions without you there that are endangering innocent lives or that are disrupting the balance of power. You're causing that. 